This video is about folding on list. Lists are a simple, interesting example of algebraic data types. Folding is an operation that can be done on any algebraic data type. It is a generalization of common operations you might want to do. So let's start. First, we need to define a list as an algebraic data type. To do so, we need to think of it in terms of a recursive definition. A list is either empty, or it has a data element and a tail, where the tail is itself a list. What kind of things might we want to do with a list? Well, we could, for example, try to compute the sum of the elements in a list. Uh, with algebraic data types, usually it's usually natural to think of a recursive solution where you think of what to do in uh, each case. For the empty list, the sum would be zero. If we have an element and the tail, then the sum would be the element plus the sum of the tail. Now we might also want to compute the product of the elements in a list. <coughs> and that would be a very similar piece of code. So I will just copy it. Rename it to product. And let's see, what do we have to change? Well. First of all, we need to multiply things rather than add them. And second, uh, for the empty list, uh, we should return one. That is the identity element for multiplication. Let's just check that this code compiles. Okay, it does. But as you can see, we used copy-paste and we change only a little thing. Can we extract the common pattern and parameterize the code by the part that changes? That's what I mean by folding. Folding is the common pattern of these two functions. So we start <coughs> by making another copy of that code. We rename it to fold. And we need to parameterize it by two things. One is that's changed. One is what we returned here. And the other is the operation that we perform between x and the recursive call, which we call plus. Of course, the recursive call now is not to sum, but to fold 0 plus. One small optimization here is to notice that this 0 and plus keeps it being packed and unpacked as arguments and they keep uh, being sent from the recursive calls. So <coughs> we could just define a function that takes them from the lexical environment. So this f does not take as arguments 0 and plus because it can access them from its environment and therefore when we do the recursive call we don't need to pass them around. Now using this the, the overall fold does not need to be recursive. Now using this we can rewrite the two functions that we had before. Sum becomes a fold 
with identity 0 and the operation being plus so to sum a list with a fold operator 0 and plus and product becomes a fold with 1 and multiplication of the operation now let's see that this compiles yes it does you might think okay sum product can we do other stuff maybe uh, compute the length of a list how do we do that well let's see if we want to compute the length of a list using fold we need to say what's the length of the empty list that's going to be zero and we need to say how to combine an element with the length of the tail so we take two arguments an element and the length of the tail and we need to return the length of a list formed by this element plus the tail that would be 1 plus n now because x x is not used we don't need to give it a name this 1 plus n function has a name it's the successor function the successor of 1 is 2 the successor of 2 is 3 and so on and now we, we don't need to list this argument explicitly does it still compile? yes it does what about something like reversing a list? well let's try to implement that we have to say what is the reversal of an empty list and that is the empty list and how do we combine an element with the reversal of <coughs> the tail in order to give the reversal of the list formed by x together with the tail well we need to put x at the end of the reversal and there is no easy way to do that so we are a little bit stuck so we go back to fold and we notice what exactly is it that we've done well we started with a list of x1 to xn and we computed the value the first operation that we've done is uh, xn plus 0 at the deepest level of the recursion of course plus is zero as uh, parameterized but I'll just use the simple symbol here then x n minus 1 is added to this quantity and then this keeps going on until we go back to the outermost level where x1 is added to the sum of the tail so once we write it like this we immediately think well what about grouping the elements the other way around this is getting this plus operation it's being right as as it is what if we group the parentheses on the other side so that would mean that we start by computing 0 plus x1 we remember that then we add x2 to it and we keep going to the last element so that gives us two folds the one that we wrote is fold right, so we flip the stuff to the right and now we want to also implement a fold left one that groups stuff to the left <coughs> it's gonna be somewhat similar 
kalau perhatiin But now, as I said, we need to keep around the sum computed so far, what we, the value accumulated so far. And when we get to the end of the list, we return the value that we accumulated. While when we process an element, what we say is, well, you process the rest of the list, but you update the accumulated value by adding to it the current element. So this accumulator would be, for example, 0 plus x1, and then x would be the next element, x2, so we add them together in this order. When we start, the accumulator is going to be 0. So now we can implement this reversal because what we need to combine at this point is not the reversal of the tail with the current element but the reversal of the prefix with the current element. If the prefix was x1, x2 and the current element is x3 that we are processing now, then this twice is going to be x2, x1, the reversal of the prefix. And we also have x3. What do we do with it? Well, we have to put it at the beginning of the list. And that's easy to do. This is a fold set, the one that we just implemented. OK. <coughs> So now, let's step back a little bit and see what are the advantages and disadvantages of using this fold. One disadvantage is that, especially if uh, the code is read by a beginner programmer, it looks a bit more opaque. You need to know, you need more background in order to understand this definition of sum than the background you need to understand the first definition of sum. You need to know what folding is. So it requires more background knowledge on the reader. One advantage is that it makes obvious one common programming pattern. There's the folding without an accumulator and the folding with an accumulator. And this happens for all algebraic data sets. The advantage is in terms of thinking. Whenever you have to implement some function, you end up th automatically thinking, can I do it with something like a fold without an accumulator? Or can I do it with something like a fold with an accumulator? So if you're used in using this fold all the time, you automatically thinking of two types of solutions that occur very, very often in practice. So it's a way of structuring your thinking, even if you don't write the code by actually using this higher order function called fold on whatever data type you have. Another advantage, this time when you actually do use a call to a higher order function is <coughs> that you don't care about the implementation. The implementation that I wrote here for fold right and fold left is only one of a number of possible ones. In particular, the two that I wrote do the grouping either to the right or to the left. But if we know that the plus that we used is associative, so it does not matter how these things are grouped. Then the implementation could be free to parallelize. So let's say split the list in half, in two halves, and say ship them to two different computers and say you fold this half, you fold this half, you give me the results, 
the, I'll add them together and return the result. That's basically what MapReduce from Google does. So, even if the implementation that I wrote here is very simple, it could actually be something more complicated that automatically distributes stuff to multiple computers. And the client code, the one that I wrote here for some product length, does not need to know that. It will look the same in all situations. Okay, what about the difference between these two particular implementation of fold right and fold left? One without an accumulator and one with an accumulator. All of them have a number of recursive calls that is the same as the number of plus minus one, the element number of elements in the list. No, it's exactly the same as the number of elements in the list. But this one, fold left, can be compiled into something more efficient because the call is so-called in a uh, tail position. It's the last thing being done. Because of that, this call can be compiled into a go to, because the value computed here for the first argument can be placed in th the same memory location where this accumulator was, because the accumulator is not used afterwards anymore. And the value computed for this second argument can be put in the same memory location where the value for the second argument used to be. This was the no one with the second argument. Because this one is not used anymore after the recursive call. The recursive call is the last thing being done here. Therefore, you don't need a new stack frame. So you can replace the call with a go to. Okay. Uh, that's all I wanted to say. Um, some things that you might want to think about is how would you implement the following functions in terms of fold left and fold right. So there's append, which takes two lists and gives you their concatenation. There's rev append that reverses the first list and appends it to the second one. There's map there's a rev map, so for this one you just look up the, the manual of a camel to see what you guys supposed to do, and then you think about how you'd implement in terms of fold. And also, after you do this append, you might be interested to do concat. Concat is a function that takes a list of lists and concatenates all of, all of them. So it's, it's, a it's like applying append repeatedly. So to summarize what we saw today uh, in this video is how to define lists as an algebraic data type, how to implement some standard functions using pattern matching, what's the common pattern for these functions, how you use that to give shorter definitions, and we discussed also a little bit why it's good to know about these folds, the fact that they could be implemented in different ways and the fact that this way of organizing solutions, uh, of organizing functions appears over and over again. And you could use that kind of organizing principle even if you don't actually call the folds.